SCHD and Jeppy are two of the most popular and successful dividend and covered call income ETFs on the entire market. Full disclosure, I personally, as of right now, invest in both these funds myself. The only thing I don't particularly like about these two funds right now is actually just how popular they're becoming. It seems like every dividend investor right now is dumping money into these two funds without even considering the alternatives. And that could be a potentially dangerous situation. And that's why my last video is all about trying to find a combination that might be at least comparable to both the Jeppy and SCHD. In that video, we covered about 10 different, uh, what I view as very high quality ETFs, but we couldn't go into too much detail because we had so many to talk about. And today I want to rectify that. Instead of focusing on both SCHD and Jeppy, today's video is dedicated to What's the best, most compelling competition to Jeppy? And if you guys want to see a follow-up on SCHD and the best competition there, let me know by leaving a like, subscribing, and let's do this. All right, so the names we have here is Jeppy X. This is the mutual fund version. I'm using it because the history goes back a little bit further. The S&P 500 in blue used as the benchmark. Divo in purple. KNG in green and XYLG in red. When looking at the five-year view, both XYLG and Jeppy, even Jeppy X, don't go back quite all the way. So just keep that in mind when looking at this. But in this analysis, we will be changing up the time frame to help and address this. And before taking a deep dive into all these names and comparing them, there's actually one more that I want to add to the conversation. I didn't have this in my last video because it's a little bit different. It's a closed end fund, but the ticker is CII and it's in this uh, purple, dark blue color. Now, let me give you guys a quick one-on-one -on, -one on the differences between ETFs and closed-end funds. A huge difference here is the fees and the expense ratio. Closed-end funds tend to be much more expensive than ETFs because they are often actively managed. Another big difference is fund transparency. And again, this is because closed-end funds tend to have active management making decisions, and ETFs are often just passive market indexes. And it doesn't say it here, but you should be aware that many closed-end funds, not all, but a lot, use leverage in their portfolio management. So there are some big differences between a passive index like the S&P 500 and a much more expensive, actively managed closed-end fund like CII. But with that said, not all ETFs are like the S&P 500. ETFs can be actively managed, have higher expense ratios, use things like covered calls, other financial derivatives. And Jeppy is actually a great example of this. I kind of view them myself as, as kind of an in-between from a broad market index and a closed-end fund. Fund. So that's why, in my opinion, if you're all about funds like Jeppy, then a closed-end fund like CII is something you should at least be aware of. And when we introduce CII into this comparison of other actively managed covered call income ETFs, the performance is relatively similar. And accounting for different uh, discrepancies like the start date of the fund, I'm still gaining a few key takeaways here. Namely that this green line, as well as the pink line to a slightly lesser extent, tend to be the outperformers here. They performed well pre-COVID. Post-COVID, they were right in line with the rest of the market in this blue line. And now in 2023, they have some of the best performance, holding up pretty well in this more challenging bear market. And then we have Jeppy and XYLG having noticeably different performance. Do keep in mind that the start date is messing with the comparison a little bit. And CII in this dark purple line is kind of somewhere in the middle, but closer to the top performers in this category. But let's go ahead and change the view to September of 2020 so we can fairly compare all of these funds side by side. So now we can notice a pretty big difference here. CII in the purple line is the outlier. It had much better price appreciation in the later half of the bull market, but that's coupled with a lot more volatility during this entire time period, especially in 2022. You can see just how much more this fund moves to both the downside and the upside, but ultimately, in terms of total return over this short time period, it does have the best returns. This blue line here is the benchmark, the S&P 500, and it had the second best performance up until 2022. But since then, it's also down the most, and that's to be expected because this index is full of technology names. And XYLG in red, which is very similar to the S&P 500 with a systematic cover call strategy overlaying it, is right there next to it. And then just slightly beating out those two options in orange is 
Jeppy. If we look back over this entire time period, Jeppy was the lagger of the bunch, but it does seem to have the smoothest line, aka the lowest level of volatility. So if we quickly compared the least volatile name, Jeppy, to the most volatile name, CII, we can see that if you invest in CII, you're going to have to be a specific kind of investor that can handle this level of volatility and not sell out at inopportune times. And if you can manage to do that based off of the historical performance, which is not necessarily indicative of future performance, but at least in this case, you are rewarded for that extra risk. Jeppy in comparison returned a lot less, but it was a much easier path to get there. So that's Jeppy, XYLG, CII. But then the last two names here are Divo in pink and KNG in green. These are the two names that in the previous view had pretty good all around performance. For the most part, we can see KNG in green here was just lagging behind the S&P 500 during the ride up in this bull market. And Divo was a little bit behind it down here in pink. And briefly, Divo here in pink was actually below XYLG in red. Now since then, both Divo and KNG have done pretty well for themselves. So my interpretation of this data, my opinion on this, is it looks like KNG, Divo, and potentially CII, if you want to take a dive into closed end funds, are the best performing in this category. But the definition of best performing really does change based off of what you want. If you're looking for the least amount of volatility and highest level of income, then Jeppy has the best performance because Jeppy does by far have the highest dividend yield at over 12% right now. And according to my definition of best performing, KNG, this only has a yield of 4.24%. Divo, another one of my top picks, only has a yield of 5.36%, and CII, that closed end fund, has a dividend yield of 6.86. So certainly competitive, but not as high as Jeppy. Another consideration, another data point is the expense ratio. And here again, Jeppy is the winner at 0.35%. KNG is 0.75%. Divo is a little bit less at 0.55%. And then CII being a closed end fund is by far the highest at 0.91%. And aside from the performance, the actual objective and strategy is one, if not the most important aspect of these funds to me. Because if you don't agree with the strategy or it doesn't meet your goals, then it doesn't matter how good the fund is at its objective, it's not going to be a good investment for you. So for CII, the investment approach is as following. It invests in a portfolio of equity securities of US and foreign issuers. It may invest directly in such securities or synthetically through the use of derivatives. So ultimately, CII is giving you access to large cap US and foreign equities with an active call option strategy to help reduce volatility and generate income. The option types used here are on single stocks and the percent overwritten, which is a very important aspect to me, is 54.59%. So just about half of the portfolio of CII has call options written on it. And when comparing that to Jeppy, this is designed to provide current income while maintaining the prospects for capital appreciation. It generates the income through a combination of selling options and investing in US large cap stocks, seeking to deliver a monthly income stream from associated option premiums and stock dividends. So, so far that's pretty similar to CII. These other two bullet points are a little bit different. So the managers of Jeppy use a proprietary research process designed to identify undervalued stocks with attractive risk return characteristics. No guarantee that strategy is going to work, but it is something that management tries to do. And they also use the S&P 500 as the long-term benchmark here. So they wanna give you a significant portion of the returns of that index with less volatility in addition to monthly income. And in terms of the derivatives, they of course use equity linked notes. The big difference here is that they're linked to the S&P 500 index versus individual stocks and it composes about 15% of the ETF right now. So even though CII had better performance than Jeppy during this time period, you can see how you gotta look at the entire picture. You might be looking for low expense ratios, low volatility, and comparable returns to the S&P 500. And if that description fits you, then Jeppy still might be the more attractive option here. If you guys want my opinion, as mentioned in the beginning, I do invest in Jeppy myself, but I'm reconsidering that due to my long time frame and my risk preference. I don't think I'm quite sold on CII yet, even though the returns are very compelling. We can see that the green line, KNG, has some of the best, most consistent performance on this chart. But you guys know I don't invest in KNG at the moment, but I do hold Divo stock. And that might be an ETF I want to 
focus even more on in the future. From looking at this, it is true that most of the time KNG has slightly better performance, but when I look at the other aspects of the fund, including the expense ratio, the actual strategy they're following, and the holdings, every time I look at the holdings between KNG and Divo, I personally prefer Divo. But you guys know the drill, I am not an expert, I'm just a guy on the internet that has a passion for dividend investing. So let us know in the comments below which one of these is your personal favorite and why. If you guys enjoyed, I'd appreciate a like, subscribing for more content in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next one.